Angie Burke here. Welcome to Victory Lab. I've got a story I want to share with you, and I really do believe, in fact, I know that this is going to help you. And I think it's something that we do as Christians more than we would like to admit. And you know, the Lord was showing me that many of us pray and we believe and we do the right thing and standing, but then we go off and do our own thing anyway, and we try to make it happen, the exact thing that we had just prayed for. So it's almost as if we didn't pray. And I wanted to share a story with you that happened just recently where the Lord really showed me, really hardcore showed me uh, where I messed up. And sometimes it's embarrassing to even say these things, but I really want to help the people in the body of Christ because I think we all do this. Uh, the other day, my daughter was visiting with her one-year-old baby and uh, she said she had to leave because she had to get back home. She had to go to the bottom of the pool and she had to get out all that those leaves in the drain. And the first thing I thought to myself was, wow, she's going to do this with a one-year-old baby. Maybe someone should be there with her to watch the baby. And right away, fear started rising just a little bit. Um, so I didn't want the enemy to get a hold of me. So she left. I didn't say anything to her. And she left. You know, I, I was just picturing the baby, something happening to her, and then the baby crying for five hours before dad came home. All that went through my mind in a matter of 10 seconds. And that can happen. And so fear started rising. So after she left, I went into my prayer room and I dispatched the angels around her. I spoke the 91st Psalm. I pled the blood of Jesus. I believed. I stood. And I knew that God would take care of her. And then I walked out of the room and I went about my business for the next two, three hours. And then on the way home that afternoon, I said, you know, I think I'm going to text her and I think I'm going to ask her, how did it go? And, you know, right away, the Lord put a check in my spirit, like, why even do that? I, I, You prayed, and I took care of it. But I almost ignored it because I just wanted to know how it went. So I texted her, and I said, how did it go with the pool? And there was no answer. So right away, I started getting a little bit more nervous inside of me. So I said, well, I'll send her a couple of more texts, and she never responded to that either. So then I start thinking, oh my gosh, something did happen to her. And so I called her, and for the first time in like 15 years, her phone went straight to voicemail. Now that really, really concerned me, and I got very upset. I started getting agitated inside, and I started picturing, you know, she's got like three feet of hair. And I started picturing her hair being caught in the drain and her not being able to get out and the baby screaming and crying. And I had no phone number for the neighbors and, and the fear was just rising so quickly. So when, by the time I got home to my house, I told my husband and he kept pretty quiet about it. I told my son and I said, you know what? I'm going to text Karen's husband, my son-in-law. And so he said, no, I thought Karen was at your house. And I said, no, she, she went to go to the bottom of the pool to get out those leaves. She wanted to do that. And he texted back, don't tell me that. So now the fear that I had transferred to him or spread to him, it didn't leave me, it spread to him. And now he was worried. So he kept trying to text her and call her and getting the same response, nothing. So finally, after about a half hour, he said to me, go and check on her because he could not leave work. And at that time I had told my son and he said, well, I'll be right Right behind you. I'll be five minutes behind you. So I had all these people afraid, all these people wanting to check on Karen. And I, it took 25 minutes to get to her house. But about 20 minutes into the drive, she texts me back and she says, what's going on? And I see that everybody's trying to get me. Is something wrong? <laughs> and so at that point, I called her and I said, where have you been? And I couldn't figure out what her answer would be. She said, mom, she said, it took 30 seconds to do the leaves. Then Lily and I swam for a half hour, and now I'm back in here, and she said, I see all these texts, and then she realized her phone accidentally went on to do not disturb, so nobody could reach it. The sounds weren't coming through for her on her end. So I said, oh, okay. And she says, I don't know why everybody's trying to call me. I'm just fine. And I said, okay, that's great. So in the meantime, her husband finally reaches her and texts her and says, are you okay? And she said, I am fine. So then he said, he gave her a security question, you know, because he still didn't believe her. And he said, what is the name of your favorite dog? And she said, what kind of a random question is that? And he said, I want to make sure that you are the one responding to me and someone else doesn't have your phone. 
So this fear spread through all of us that day. And then I turned my car around. I was on my way home, home and I was feeling really happy and really good. And then the Lord spoke to me and says, why did you even bother to pray? And that hit me. You know, I kind of knew that was going on through this whole process, but I didn't want to admit it. I just kept going with the flesh and going with the flesh and going with the flesh. And the enemy loved it. And, you know, I realized that I repented to the Lord and I said, I blew it. I am really, really sorry. And I received his forgiveness for me. But the truth is, I was not believing anything I prayed. I thought I was. But, you know, when you really, truly believe, then you'll leave it alone and and it'll come up maybe in conversation naturally the next day by her. I mean, this is something that you don't have to worry about anything once you give it to the Lord. And, you know, when I walk into my prayer room every day, I see Mark a 1123, a big sign. I had it made, especially for me. And it says this, when we pray, we believe. And I felt so small and so insignificant and so bad at that point because I, I, I like failed. Like I gave into that fear. And look, fear is just an emotion. And I tell people, it's what you do with that initial emotion that really matters. Are you truly going to believe? But the truth is, most of us pray and pray and pray. And then we go out and act as if we never prayed. So I want you to examine yourself in the next days and see what you're actually standing for and believing for? And are you really leaving it in the Lord's hand? Did you really believe what you prayed? Because all Jesus is asking for, guys, is that his children believe him. So I hope this helps you. It certainly helped me. And the next time something like this happens, I'm going to stand and believe and rest and go on and enjoy my life trusting in the Lord because he is good. Hope this helped. Thank you and God bless you.